Enjoy this message courtesy of Overcomers Assembly Studio. In life, you've got to make a choice, right or wrong. We pray that you are blessed as you make the right choices in life. Parents to be on all mankind. Will you have an offspring and you don't have a plan for that offspring? What is the plan? It's a detailed proposal for doing or achieving something. Or an intention or decision about what one is going to do. So you have your child. Even before he grows up, you decide on a name for him. That name in our culture reflects a lot. It tells the future plan for that child. It may fall in place. It may not. It may deviate from it. But as good parents, we eventually guide that child to somewhere that will benefit him and benefit the family. God, who is God? People ask this question. We have not seen him. We know he dwells somewhere up there. So who is he? That everybody, everybody in the world, be you Christian, be you Muslim, be you Bahia, be you anything, we all worship God. So who is God? For us, we know God as the creator and ruler of the universe and the source of all moral authority, or the supreme being. Some may say it's a superhuman being, or spirit worshiped, having power over nature, and human fortunes, a deity. For me, I regard God as a father. We are the sons and children of God. And he did create mankind in his image to be his friend, children, and offspring. Thus, there's every reason to believe that God has planned for mankind. So we can see that in Jeremiah 29, 11, as we heard earlier on, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Great plans from a magnanimous God. There seems to be conditions attached for God to effect his plans for us. This is confirmed by his choices. If you look at Romans 8, 28 to 30, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Wonderful. Do you qualify for any of these things listed above? If not, how do you qualify? How 
do you qualify? Fortunately, in Psalm 32, 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. You can see what the Lord means. He will lead us. It's not just having the plan. He will walk us towards that plan. Clearly, God has plans for you. And these plans are no fluke. Because we can see that in Psalm 33, 11, it states, For the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. And in 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So, what follows in Deuteronomy 31, 8 is domain. The Lord himself goes before you, and will be with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. It is thus important to follow Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Submit to him, follow his ways, and will make your path straight. He also talked of repentance. This is because we are sinners. We are not perfect. Nevertheless, God has given us a leeway by teaching us, by directing us, by ensuring that we follow some particular path. Because as in Proverbs 16, 9, in their hearts humans plan their course, but the Lord establish, establishes the steps. Wonderful. There's no doubt this God indeed has various plans for mankind. But I believe the greatest plan of God for you is salvation. That the greatest plan of God for mankind is salvation. More so since we are deep in sin. For this reason, John 3, 16 reads, For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. You heard that in the earlier lessons. God's wish or plan was for Jesus to lead us to salvation. Throughout his lifetime, Jesus through his lifestyle, teachings, and all the miracles he performed was leading us to that salvation. So we can see that in John 5, 24, he says, Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life, I will not be judged, but has crossed from death to life. It will not be judged, but have been redeemed. That's what it means. Your sins have been forgiven, and you will live in eternity with him. If not the plan of God, how can we be saved? If God did not plan it, how can we be saved? 
Ephesians 2, 8 to 10, read. For it is by the grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's not your doing. It's the plan of God for you that even when you sin and you repent, he will forgive you and save you. So in nine, not by works. So no one can boast. For we are God's handwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. He has prepared us to do this good work. You can see the plan of God. In doing this work, we are born again. If you are really doing the work of God, then you must be born again. So in 1 Peter 3, 4, it reads, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us the birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. What is that? Nothing other than eternal life. That's our goal. That's the plan of God for us. It's what he has prepared us for. That's what we will work to, to fulfill the desire of God for us. How do we achieve some of this? There is the church. There is the church. We may then ask, what is the role of the church in God's plan? What is the role of God? Or rather, the role of church in God's plan? What is the church? Have we asked ourselves? The church is an organized body of believers. That is the church of God. This body that teaches the way of God. And it is a place of worship. It doesn't have to be a building. It is a belief. It's a congregation of believers. We are a church. Right now, we are a church. Each individual is with his television or laptop or phone or whatever. We are worshiping. We are talking about God. If we look at 1 Chronicles 16, 23 to 24, therefore, what do we do in the church? What are some of the things we do in the church that contributes to God's plan for us? Sing to the Lord, all earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. By doing this, we get close to God. And this accords according to his will. All mornings we've been listening to lessons and songs. Our reverend has told us, when we get to heaven, what else we will do but to continue to sing and praise God and worship together. So the church is expected to cheat the way of the Lord, to guide us to have faith and belief and be holy. To teach us the way of the Lord, to guide us to have faith 
belief and be holy. Therefore, in Romans 10, 14 to 15, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. And thus, as in Matthew 28, 19 to 20, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You can see what we expect the church to contribute to mankind in following the plans of God for us. It doesn't end there. 20 says, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely and with you always, to the very end of the age. Don't be discouraged. Listen to the word of God. Accept him. Live according to the will of his son. And there you are, you're on the right path for what God has planned for us. Is the church carrying out this responsibility? Have we asked ourselves that basic question? Or we are just there collecting money, preaching miracles? Are we really teaching the word of God? Are we really leading mankind to fulfill the plans of God for us? It's a major challenge. The church and Christianity must face. Are we responding to, as mankind, to the good teachings of the church? It is. Thank you, Jesus. Please like and share our videos. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.